Hello again, my friends. Eric Pearson here. I apologize for being away for so long, but the month of December was very busy for me. But now that I've got a bit of a break, I'd like to share with you a game that I got for the holidays called Carrier Command 2. This is a very interesting and very challenging game in which you manage an entire aircraft carrier single-handedly. So, for this video, I just want to give you a tour of the ship itself. So, I'm going to do that right now. Now, there is a full campaign that is very long, or you can choose simpler, shorter skirmishes, and that's what I'm going to be aiming for in future videos of this game if I get the chance. So, I'm going to start with a new game. I'm going to call this uh, a custom campaign. I'm disabling the tutorial. I'm only going to have four islands instead of the usual 64 islands. There will only be uh, a base difficulty of one shield, just to keep it from being overwhelming, with a default loadout. So I'm going to get started right now. So here I am aboard the bridge of the aircraft carrier, and you can see that we're still in dry dock. So we're not going to launch just yet. Right now, I just want to get the power systems up and running, so I'm going to activate the main circuit breaker. So this is the helm, and this is where we would deploy the carrier if we wanted to. We have our various stations for uh, weapons control, over here, vehicle control. We have the main hollow map here. And then we have inventory control um, and communications and power control here. But right now, I'm just going to show you around the ship. Now, the graphics are pretty blocky, but they put a lot of thought into uh, how everything goes together. Here we are, we're on a balcony at the top of the carrier's island. You can hear the whi wind whistling around us. We've got another similar door on the other side. Now let's go down here. We've got an elevator that enables us to go up and down the decks. We can also use the stairs if we want. Let's turn on some lights. So here we have some crew quarters Spartan but does the trick we've got pipes running overhead we got lights we have an air conditioner here's what looks like a locker room some additional uh, quarters here this looks like a storeroom not much to see here. This looks like a uh, power control uh, switchgear room. And I think this door opens to the rear deck of the island. So we're currently facing the back of the ship. This is one of the torpedo launchers that we have. There's one here, and then there's another one on the opposite side of the ship as you can see. Okay, so let's keep moving now. Let's give the elevator a try. Right now we're on deck 7. We're going to go one down to deck 6. There we go. Looks like we have... Looks like double occupancy crew quarters here. Looks like another of the same. No desk, but we've got a small closet space here. Let's see what's down here. This is, again, balcony of the island. This looks like a little mess room or uh, rec area. Got a small couch, a couple of tables. Good place to hang out. And then opposite that, we have 
the galley. Looks like we've got a sink, a couple of uh, deep fat fryers, a uh, stove and range top, some other uh, cook pots here, maybe pressure cookers, and some additional food stations here, and uh, ventilation. Oh, look, we have a fume hood here, too. See, like I said, even though the graphics are blocky, they put a lot of thought into designing the interior of the ship. And I think this, once again, opens out to the back. So now we have a closer look at the torpedo launchers here and on the other side. Okay, so let's keep moving. Okay, this was... Let's go down to deck five. This is basically one above the flight deck. We might as well take the stairs at this point. So now we're on the flight deck. Looks like we have a little workshop area here. So here we are on the deck itself. So we'll just walk around a little bit. Now, compared to real-world aircraft carriers, the proportions of this are a bit chunky. Um, if I'm reminded of anything, I'm actually reminded of a toy that uh, I saw in a catalog when I was a kid. The G.I. Joe toy line was very popular during the 80s, and believe it or not, they had this one gigantic playset of an aircraft carrier called the USS Flag. And it had an unprecedented price tag for its time. It was $110, which in nine, that was in 1980s dollars. Nowadays, that would be the equivalent of $270, $280 for a single toy. But it was massive. It was literally seven feet long. I don't... I didn't know anyone who had a room big enough to put this thing in. Anyway, moving along. We've got one deck gun here. We have our radar system. This is our cruise missile launcher, which is a good way of hitting uh, targets uh, from a long distance away. This is our larger deck gun here. So this is another way for us to hit targets from afar. And I'm walking toward the bow because I want to show you two of the four point defense systems that we have. You'll see it in a minute. But actually, before I do that, I know, I can't resist. Here we go. I'm king of the world! King of the world! That's right. I went there. Okay, so down here, these are what are called the CIWS or CWIS systems. These are what are called close-in weapon systems. They're point defense machine guns that shoot down incoming missiles, and these exist in the real world. Uh, this closely resembles uh, what's used in the United States, the Phalanx Sea Whiz. There's also a land-based version of it that is used for shooting down incoming missiles and also rockets and artillery. So these guys are what will protect us from incoming missiles. And speaking of missiles, next I'm going to show you our anti-aircraft missile batteries. You'll see those in a moment. I know it takes a little bit of time for me to walk over there. It is a large aircraft carrier, but thankfully it doesn't have to be too large because the aircraft we're dispatching are uncrewed drones. So they're actually smaller than human-piloted aircraft. Okay, so here we go. We've got two anti-aircraft missile batteries. Those will come in handy. 
And then here is the elevator to the uh, aircraft hangar. So that's how aircraft are getting from below deck up to the flight deck for takeoff. And over here, that's the pod that we used to parachute from our orbital spaceship down to the planet's surface. Now, if I didn't mention it before, here's the setup for why we're here on this planet. This is the planet of Telos. It's another planet, not Earth, but Telos is being used for its natural resources to keep Earth supplied. The problem is that a terrorist organization named Stanza has hacked another aircraft carrier just like this one and is using it to plant geologic weapons of mass destruction known as deep crust detonators. And they're planting these on a set of islands in the area. And if they succeed in planting all of the islands with deep crust detonators, they will be set off and that will ruin the planet's ability to provide resources for Earth. And it's our job to stop them with this aircraft carrier. Okay, so we're going down one more level. This is a corridor light. So now we're on a balcony looking out over the aircraft hangar. We'll get some lights on to get a closer look in a moment. Could use the elevator, but we're just gonna do this here. Now there should be around here somewhere a, here we go, there should be around here a vehicle bay light. Here we go, that's better. Alright, so now we're in the hangar, and we have currently a complement of four aircraft, two are helicopters and two are fixed wing drones. Now this is what's known as a razor bill. Let me get a closer look here. Now the Razor Bill, it's a basic drone helicopter. Unlike most conventional helicopters, this uses what's called a coaxial counter-rotating rotor system. The two sets of rotors spin in opposite directions to counteract the torque. That allows it to uh, remain stable without the use of a tail rotor that would be vulnerable to small arms fire. This helicopter design is not conventionally found um, in large parts of the world. The Russians, specifically the Kamov Design Bureau, did a lot with uh, coaxial rotor craft, including the KA-52 uh, Hokum attack helicopter. But enough about that. So now over here we have what's called the Albatross, and the Albatross is a light scout drone craft. It is capable of carrying missiles and also a chain gun. It's also equipped with a gimbal camera, which allows us to do recon on the islands and also spot targets for artillery strikes from the ship itself. Remember those big guns on the main deck? Yeah. Okay, so we've covered that. Now, we have space for additional aircraft, but we haven't acquired those yet. That's okay. There will be another time for that. Okay, I know it's dark in here. It's like the old Infocom adventures. It is dark in here. You're likely to get eaten by a Gru. Okay, down one more. Let's turn on a corridor light. And we should be able to turn on a vehicle bay light. That's better. Okay, so this is the lowest deck of the ship where our land vehicles are stored. Also, some additional supplies and munitions. So these amphibious land vehicles are what we're going to use to take back the islands from Stanza. So three of our four 
units are equipped like this. This is what's called a seal. It looks like a Mars rover on steroids. It's a box on wheels, has a snorkel which enables the engine to breathe while it's floating through the ocean as it transits from the carrier to the islands. It's got a big strong cannon on it and it has a camera so that we can see what it sees remotely. But then over here we've got one unit that isn't like the others. This one, instead of being equipped with a gun, is equipped with these canisters called virus bots. And inside each of these canisters is a little four-legged robot, kind of like the prototypes developed from Boston Dynamics. And the purpose of the virus bots is to hack the command center on each island so that we can bring it back under our control. And then over here, this is the ramp leading out of the ship. This is basically our well deck. So this is where our land units embark and disembark the ship. All right, so now that we've covered that, now I could walk all the way back, or another thing I can do is hit escape, go to game, and then return to bridge. So now here we are back on the bridge. So this is our basic tour of the boat. So this is a good place to stop. In our next video, I will show you how to navigate the basic systems of the ship and how to use them to fight the enemy. So thank you very much for watching and also thank you very much for your continued support and viewership. Here's to a better 2022 for all of us. Eric Pearson, signing off.